Hi guys and uh, welcome to this little video which is uh, basically just a, a small um, a small kind of suggestion from my side or, or opinion from my side of what I believe are currently uh, three brands that Pannon obviously has, well Pannon their own brand, ISN as well and Soundrhyme, three brands that they carry and these are in my opinion, uh, the models that I think bring together the price, the performance, the uniqueness, and you know, in, in, they they tick the more the most right boxes. Let's put it that way. Um, I feel that these IEMs are the ones that uh, really make sense. You know, in a market where we have so many IEMs being released every day, so many IEMs that really, uh, you know. Uh, it's, it, it becomes increasingly hard to, to distinguish and, and to what to buy, what not to buy. Because trust me, as a, as a reviewer, it is very difficult to sometimes see differences or to notice differences between stuff at a certain price range. Uh, and so, you know, I try to kind of select these because uh, they, in my opinion, stood out. Okay. Um, Obviously, there are more models from any one of these brands which are also equally interesting, equally good. But I thought that these ones kind of had uh, the, the, those features that I really, uh, you know, uh, 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 find the, the right ones to have to, to justify spending this amount of money or that amount of money. And the ones that, in my opinion as well, will maintain themselves over a longer period of time as being uh, truly special, truly something that stands out. Anyway. As I said, Soundrhyme, ISN, and Pannon. <coughs> Excuse me. From Soundrhyme, uh, I've tested basically everything that they that they've launched up to now. The two IEMs that stood out for me are the SR7, their OnePlus Six, uh, Six BAs, One um, DD uh, tuning switches, um, and you know it, it's it's um, an IEM that obviously with the tuning switches you can adjust the, the sound that you want out of it, but in, in the current setting that I have, which is the one that doesn't boost the bass, uh, the sound that the SR7 offers is uh, is very um, is very satisfying. It's a very versatile sounding IEM, uh, great tonality, great timbre, which is something which I, I uh, you know um, uh, appreciate a lot. Um, you know, there's 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 a, a nice, full, lush sound to everything from the bass to the mids to the highs. Nothing is done in a manner which doesn't match up with the with the rest of the frequency band. The BA timbre is almost non-existent in my opinion. Uh, you know, good extension at both ends of the spectrum. Uh, good as well technically uh, well built it is a, a really nice i am fair enough 369 is not a it's not a, it's, it's not small money and and yes you have at that kind of price you have another one another i am which stands out very much so which is our full performer eight um but if it is from sound rhyme in my opinion this is the i am that actually makes sense the sr5 is good but i don't think it has enough to justify uh, it being considered unique the dt500 is also very good uh, but again uh, you know there's just not enough there to really say that it stands out yes it has an excellent execution of the upper mids and the and the the treble uh, uh, partly uh, due to the to the, the to the the way that the ESTs have been implemented which is absolutely unbelievable uh, and the whole IM is genuinely very good but the reality is the SR7 doesn't stay behind the DTE uh, uh, 500 and overall I think it's $369 which isn't small money um, it is an IM which makes more sense the other one is the SR8 which is their all BA uh, set it's 14 BAs actually in reality uh, Sonian and Knowles mixed it's also got tuning switches and again it's an IEM that, depending on how you, you, you set the switches, you can have a sound which is very reminiscent of one of the uh, references in terms of all BA uh, sets in the market, which is the, the Neon Pro, the old audio Neon Pro. So you'll have a sound which is comparable and even superior to the Neon Pro in certain aspects, in my opinion. I, I personally f uh, like the way the, 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 the vocals are done here on the on the... SR8 over the Neon Pro, and I feel as well that the extension is superior. Um, the Neon Pro, what it does have over the SR8 
is uh, a more energetic uh, presentation, which will probably be better for something like rock and so on and so forth. But overall, the SR8, I feel, is an absolutely beast of an IEM. Um, you know, for an all BA set and the way that everything has been tuned, it's it's fantastic. Yes, of course, it's a BA set, so it's got BA base, but it's got a really well done BA base. Mids are flawless, in my opinion. Technically, as well, it's an absolute beast. I think it's an absolutely unbelievable um, IEM at the price that it's offered for seven hundred and forty nine dollars. Fair enough. Again, it's a lot of money. It's not pocket. You know, it's not it's not money to just. Uh, but it is an IEM that I believe brings together enough characteristics to justify you spending this kind of money if you want a really really good OBI set. You know, for you to find something that is going to be let's say significantly better, you're going to have to spend a chunk of money. Uh, over it because the Neon Pro or however good it is isn't better the the SA6 Mark II from Duno uh, isn't better uh, they might do certain things better or, not, or, or some certain things worse but for you to find something which you you can say to yourself no this is significantly better really really better you're gonna have to be spending well into the two thousand dollar price bracket and honestly I still feel that even going that high it's not going to bring you something which is really going to perhaps justify the price difference so the, the SR8 in terms of an all BA set is absolutely fantastic okay from uh, ISN we have two models I'm actually going to talk about the cheaper one first which is the H30 uh, I feel that this IEM at $129 is it's a one plus two it is an absolutely uh, gem of an IEM, super uh, neutral with a slight, slight boost uh, in the bass and in the in the in the mids. I mean, very, very. I mean, very relaxed IEM, but also pleasing to listen. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about the the Panon Fan Two, and and the Panon Fan Two is a fantastic IEM, mind you. But when I compare this to the Panon Fan Two, um, I don't see this. Uh, honestly, uh, staying behind the fan to uh, enough to to justify spending that that well twice the money really. Um, and again, let me say I'm not detracting anything from the Panon fan too. Eh? I'm not detracting anything from that IM. But this IM at one twenty nine dollars, um, it is f fantastic. It's got you know it's, it hasn't got a lot of it's, it's not a base monster. Everything is just about being very smooth, very uh, audiophile kind of um, uh, presentation. Um, great mid-range, great uh, 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 treble. Uh, it, you know, the technicalities uh, for the price are more than acceptable. More than acceptable. Um, technically, for example, I find this to be superior to an SR5. And I hear a lot of praises being done to the SR5. Technically-wise, I feel that this is superior to the SR5. Um, very very nice I am honestly very nice the other one is one that has just been released recently which is the Neo 5 and uh, for a one plus four okay again two hundred seventy nine dollars it's not exactly you know pocket money but this is an absolute beast uh, of an I am it embodies uh, what I believe is the ISN house sound perfectly which is that full lush bass it's got crazy crazy amounts of, of bass but it's all very, very good quality bass. And where you see it shine in, in that same bass that I'm talking about is in songs like uh, Larry Colton's uh, Sunrise, the live version. You know, that, that, that bass and, and the, the guitar, you listen to it on this, yeah, and, and you understand why I feel it's such a, a special I am. Um, the rest of the, of the spectrum is also very well executed, mids and treble. Of course, fair enough, okay, because when you have this amount of bass, certain things are going to suffer. Technicalities are not the ideal, but again, non-offensive. <clears throat> It is not an IEM that's, uh, that pretends to be the, the, perfect, the perfect monitor. No, it isn't. But if, if we are going to, or if I'm going to say that it is, a, it is a colored IEM, it is a colored IEM that has been done to a very, very high standard. And I honestly believe it's, it's an IEM that is definitely worth, uh, you know, uh, considering, definitely worth being a choice if you want a, a one plus four that's been well executed. Okay. Uh, on this side, finally, we have uh, two IMs on Panon. The first one is the Panon Serial. Three dynamic drivers. Uh, what, if, if what you like is an organic, old-school kind of speaker sound, you know, from the 70s, in an IM, this is the one to get. End of story. 
Um, yes, there are IEMs here which have more treble extension, SR8, uh, SR7, <clears throat> even the even the Neo5 has got more treble extension. But what you get here is a old school sound. Um, amazing bass. Out of all the IEMs here, um, <coughs> and, and again, the differences are minimal, but out of all the IEMs here, the two IEMs that for me personally stand out in terms of the bass of the serial and the Neo5. The bass of the, of the serial is surreal. It's got weight, it's got texture, it's got presence, it's got everything, everything. Fantastic bass, fantastic mid-range. And those are definitely the two uh, calling cards. And then the treble is just there in the right amount. The, the, the matching of the three dynamic drivers, uh, the, the, the 10, the 8 and the 6 has been done flawlessly. It's an absolute beast of an IEM, honestly. Uh, if, if what you like is that, then you, you've, hit, you've, got it, you, you've hit the, the right, uh, the right uh, key. Uh, $299, fair enough, it's not, it's not again cheap, you know, but if you want something unique, definitely. I would take this, for example, over the Unique Melodies 3DT. The Unique Melodies 3DT is also an all dynamic driver. I am very good. I personally like it a lot. I really like it a lot, and I feel that this is superior to that. I think that already gives you a a, a good a good uh, um, a good idea of how good I believe the serial is. The same the same goes for the QDC, the 3D Magic. That's one thousand four hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken. This, in my opinion, outdoes the 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 the, the, the QDC. All right, and then finally. Um, the um, 10th anniversary from, from Pannon, um, a tribrid. Uh, actually, just before I continue that, let me just, I have, uh, in case you guys haven't you know, paid attention, I have uh, quite, a, you know, this is a hybrid, that's an OBA set, that's a hybrid, that's a hybrid, this is a all DD set, and this is a tribrid. This is the only tribrid that I have here. Um, before the, the 10th anniversary came out, uh, the tribrid that I believe stood out and the only reason why it isn't here is because this one is superior uh, and I feel that the Neo5 and the H30 have more things going for it to justify it than uh, 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 to justify being here in this group and not that other IEM which is the EST50 from ISN. From ISN. Uh, this is for me the, the, the or out of the ISN EST50 out of the, the, the Soundrime DTE500 uh, and now the 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 Pannon, uh, this tribal which isn't their first one anyway, but this is for me the best one. Um, the implementation of the dual six millimeter drivers flawless, flawless. Um, I've heard some people say that oh the bass it's better than the bass of the serial and so on and so forth. I don't agree with that. It's got fantastic bass quality wise, it's amazing, but definitely not as much bass as the serial. No way, not not even close. Okay, and let's not even compare it to the Neo Five in terms of quantity. No comparison possible. Now, it does have a lot of bass, especially when you, say, when you consider that it's two 6mm drivers. And the implementation then of the uh, Sonian um, BAs and the, the ESTs is, I mean, top-notch. Uh, if the DTE500 has done that, if the implementation on the DTE500 is very good, over here, it's been taken up a notch. It is flawless. Uh, Honestly, you gotta you gotta hear a tenth anniversary to really appreciate it. In terms of uh, again, well, bass I've mentioned, but mids are amazing, amazing. Uh, timbre, tonality, amazing. Actually, that is a common f denominator in all of these IEMs. All of these IEMs have got for me amazing timbre and tonality. Some more neutral, some more colored. That's more neutral. Uh, that's a, a timbre and tonality associated more more with BA drivers. But they all have a very good timbre and tonality. Which are the three that for me stand out? Let's I would say Neo 5, 10th Anniversary and Serial. Those are the three that I think stand out as being the best. And you know the SR7 and the H30 and the, the SR8 are just slightly behind. I mean you know the differences are <laughs> minimal. But these three in terms of that aspect is amazing. In terms of that overall lushness of sound, the 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 10th anniversary you're listening you're listening to it and it sounds it sounds really really like, like an expensive IEM I mean I've got some 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 pretty decent tribrids I well at least I believe so I've got an EJ07M which I think is fantastic and this is for me superior to EJ07M uh, and I think that's that's very high praise 
Uh, fair enough, four hundred ninety nine dollars. It's it's not not small money. But if you want a really good tribrid, really well executed tribrid, and following what has become now a, a slight trend, which is the dual DDs and so on and so forth, this is a you know a, a no brainer choice. There's really nothing else that I feel is superior. Um, there there is one IEM uh, which I still haven't tried, and hopefully soon I will do so, which is the um, Aurora from our audio uh, but the Aurora is more expensive okay uh, it's not as well accessorized and I believe from what I've heard so far that the Aurora is more more tame more relaxed in its presentation the Aurora as well isn't a tribe it's actually a hybrid so again another disadvantage for the price and considering it's a, a, a hybrid a tribrid my apologies uh, the only other IEM that in terms of price uh, uh, can compete is the variations from Moondrop. Uh, all the others are all way up there, except as well for the DTE 500, I was sorry. So there's two just, there are just two IMs that can compete in terms of price, DTE 500 and the variations. The rest are all way above $500, six, seven, eight hundred dollars um, And that's it guys, I mean, like I said, this is not really a comparison or, or which is the best, which isn't the best. It was just a small video for me to, to um, give my opinion on what I believe or the IIMs from these three brands which stand out and, and are, are worthwhile considering if you are uh, looking for something different, something unique, something which is very good value for money. Although, of course, like I mentioned before, I mean, when you're talking 700 bucks, we're not talking exactly small money. But I think you, you get the idea. All right. Anyway, as always, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.